Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Al YouTube channel and I am back with challenge number 8 for my No Spend November challenge and giveaway series. I hope you'll stick around, see what the new challenge is, and see what I'm going to create. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel and you're going to want to get in on the challenge and giveaway, make sure to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. I'm so excited to be back with challenge number eight in my No Spend November series. I've loved seeing what all of you are creating to play along and get entered to win that wonderful prize. If you don't know about my No Spend November series, here's a little bit about it. During the month of November, I will be putting out challenges for myself and for my subscribers. You can play along on YouTube, on Instagram, or on the brand new Call Me Crafty Owl Facebook page. At the end of the month, I will tally up those entries and one lucky subscriber will win the now sold out Gina K Designs Sparkle and Shine card kit. Don't forget for all of the official rules and details to check out the video linked in the description box below. Also in the description box are the hashtags that you'll need to use for today's challenge on YouTube and on Instagram. Don't forget on Instagram to go ahead and tag me at call me crafty owl. And if you're going to participate on Facebook, make sure in the description of your photo that you add your YouTube username. I really hope that you're going to join me for a challenge or two. Once you watch that introduction video with all of the rules, if you have any questions, make sure to let me know. You can leave those in the comment section or you can email me at the email address in the description box. Challenge number eight is I can see clearly now. With clear being the key word in that, you need to create a new project that uses a clear element in some way on your card. Your clear element could be a clear button, a clear window on a shaker, or if you're like me and love clear cards, it could be a clear card base. If you've been around my channel long, you know that I love to make clear cards. Now, if you're new to my channel or haven't seen me make a clear card before, I do have my clear card Q&A video linked in the description box below. I go over the material I buy and where I get it and give you some other tips and tricks. I won't go into much of that during this video. Besides that clear card base, I will be using the Simple Stories Domestic Bliss 6x8 paper pad. I did already pre-select the three papers I'm going to use. And then this card and this little clothespin came from an ephemera pack that was also the Simple Stories Domestic Bliss. I got both of these items in a warehouse box and I decided to get those out and use it. For my sentiment today, I'm going to be using this Jelly Bean Soup stamp set, and I thought sending smiles across the miles was a good sentiment for the times we're in now, especially since we really can't go give a smile in person. If I add any other products later on in the video, I will be sure to let you know, but as always, if I leave you with any questions, make sure to leave those in the comment section below, and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty! I'm going to get started today by doing the cutting. The 4x6 card I'm going to cut to 4.5 inches wide by 3.25 inches tall. This will end up being the cover on the inside card. Next I'm going to cut the pattern yellow paper so it's slightly larger than the card I just cut so there's a nice border. This got cut to 4 and 3 quarters inches wide by 3.5 inches tall. The floral paper is next and this is going to fill the inside of the card. I cut this just slightly smaller than four and a quarter by five and a half. I'm talking maybe like a one thirty second smaller. Finally, I get out the blue pattern paper and I just cut a strip of this that is five and a half inches wide by three inches tall. Later I will cut this down so I didn't want to cut off too much right now. 
Then I brought in a piece of medium weight white cardstock and I'm gonna cut this so when it's folded, it's the same size as the yellow piece of paper. This will be an inner card inside the clear card so that I can write a personal message, but it won't be seen from the front. Once I have that cut down to four and three quarters by seven, I fold that in half so it's the same size as that yellow piece. Now that some of the pieces are ready, I'm gonna to put together as much of the card as I can. The first thing will be the yellow piece of paper on the front of the inner card, and then I place the floral paper inside the clear card. Now, this adhesive does stick well to that clear card stock, so I made sure to place that carefully before I pressed it down any further. Next, I place adhesive on the back of the inner card and got this placed on the inside. Once that was on there, I added some adhesive to the back of the house piece and that got centered on the card inside. Now, I probably could have put that on first before adhering the inner card, but hey, it worked out in the end. I wanted to add a wave onto the top of the blue paper before I placed it on the card front. So I brought in my tried but true Creative Memories Wavy Trimmer. I have had that thing for over a decade and still pull it out every once in a while. Once that wave was on there, I held it up to the card front and kind of decided where I wanted it to go. Then just very roughly, I used my fingernail on the back to put a small crease where I wanted to make the cut. I brought in my Fiskars Photo Trimmer, lined that indentation up with the edge of the trimmer, and just cut off that excess. Then I could add adhesive to the back of this and get it on the card front. Again, I was really careful before I pressed that down hard that I did have it lined up correctly because that adhesive sticks to clear cardstock, and if you pull it up, it's gonna leave some sticky residue there. Off camera, I cut a scrap of white cardstock down to four and a half inches wide by one inch tall. This is what I will be stamping my sentiment onto. Because I know I will probably have to stamp it a couple times to get a nice crisp image, I did go ahead and bring in my Misty. The ink I chose for my sentiment is Stampin' Up's Night of Navy. I don't know if you could see it on screen, but in that house piece that I cut down for my focal point, there was some dark blue in there, so I thought this would go nicely. Next, I'm gonna bring in that clothespin piece of ephemera. I wanted it to look like the clothespin was actually kind of snapped onto the sentiment strip, so I brought in my little scissors and I cut up to where the wire coil is on the clothespin. After playing around with it for a little bit, I decided that my sentiment strip was probably too thick. So I brought back in my trimmer and I cut this down so the final size was three quarters of an inch tall. This made it a little bit better and none of the words got cut off. After I trimmed that down, I brought in my Stampin' Up! Banners Pick a Punch Punch and I put a fishtail on the right edge. Then I again put that clothespin up to the sentiment. This size seemed much better, so I added some adhesive to the back, put my little clothespin on there, and then added adhesive to the front so that would be adhered down. To add some more dimension to the card, I decided that I would add this piece to the card front with some foam tape. So I brought in my 3 8 inch big blue roll of foam tape and added a couple pieces to the back. Now the great thing about clear cards is, because you can see the inside, you can add a lot of dimension, but not a lot of layering or height so it's easier to mail, just because each thing is on a different level. Here's a look at the finished card. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I made my card for today's challenge. If you did, as always, I appreciate a thumbs up. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye-bye.
Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.